bitches. If you are new here, hello, my name is Brittany. In today's video, it's time for another favorites and fails. And you know what? I have not been wearing a ton of makeup lately and I have quite a few fails today. I was going through everything. I'm like, well shit, maybe I was a fucking hater this month. So if you guys like favorites and fails videos, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up or thumbs it down. That's cool too. If you're hate watching, I appreciate you. And I see all the britches coming to the live chat. What's good? What's popping? How's everyone doing? I'm like looking at my complexion right now and I'm like, there's just something that I'm not loving about the way my skin looks today. It's fine. I feel like I'm like relearning how to do makeup over again because I'm not wearing makeup all the time. And I actually have one little drink favorite this month as well, but primarily we're, I'm pretty sure like all makeup. I'm like looking, I'm like, yeah, everything's for the most part makeup. So guys, I need to know what were your favorites? What were your fails? Leave them in the comments, leave them in the live chat. And I'm just going to dive right in. A lot of these things I am wearing today, I'll make sure I specify which. Let's start with the drink though, because... I'm fucking hooked on these things. <laughs> I'm over here like, a bitch needs to be healthier. These aren't like, from what I understand, like the healthiest thing to drink. But I get so fucking bored drinking water. So these body armor, I feel like everybody's talking about these. It's supposedly like coconut water with natural flavors. I don't fucking know. I'm just like, yo, these taste bomb. <laughs> Every single one that I've tried, I think is incredible. Even like peach, like peach usually is not my jam. These are fucking fire. So definitely recommend. I picked up like a eight pack of like the mini bottles because at least it gives me something. Like I basically need to stop drinking Starbucks all day every day. So these are a decent substitute, right? Has anybody tried these? You guys let me know. I know my ears look super red. Listen. Today, today was a tease. Today was a fucking favorite. It was like 74 today. So beautiful out. So sunny. This is just what happens sometimes. Like, especially when I drink alcohol, my ears always get super red. There's nothing wrong. They feel warm, but I don't know. They're just, they're just red. I'm fine. It's fine. Everything's fine. <laughs> so moving on from a drink favorite, Let's move to a product I've had for a while, but I never really talked about it that much. And it reminds me a lot of another very expensive product. But this is why I wanted to mention it today because one, I know the VIB sale is coming up. If you guys didn't see it, it starts, I believe, April 1st for Rouge members. But the Gucci Silk Priming Serum. This kind of reminds me of the Double Ten Serum from Sicily, except this does have that like silky feeling to it this there's something about gucci products i love the way that they smell i don't know why because usually i'm not the biggest fan of like florally type of fragrances especially in like my skincare or even makeup products give me like something that smells like birthday cake cupcakes or something like that i am all about that life but usually scents i don't really love in my products but something about gucci i fucking love but this makes your skin feel so silky like whenever I put this on my face and even on like my fingers right now my fingers feel like silky soft I just love how this makes my skin feel I think that there's other primers that make my makeup look better but I wanted to follow up on this one because usually I feature like follow-up products in these videos as well this one was more of a follow-up I just noticed I've been reaching for it a lot more I still do prefer the Sicily over the Gucci but you're talking about like $200 versus this is still like super expensive. I definitely think that there's other primers that are just as good, if not better. But this one, it's definitely worth the splurge. This one's still a favorite. I still really enjoy this one. But the Gucci, I am enjoying this one. So you guys let me know if you've tried this, what you think of it. But nice little follow up. I love the packaging. It's got the glass bottle. It's fucking bouge. Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang. We love Gucci up in here. Okay. All right. Let's do another favorite. And this one, I'm like... It's not a, it's a favorite because it's my favorite foundation that I've tried recently, but it's not my favorite. That makes sense? Like, it's a favorite of all the, that I've tried. Like I just said, I repeat myself so much, but it's, it's fine. So the Dior Forever Skin Glow 24 Hour Radiant Foundation. Is anybody surprised that I love a Dior foundation? So the reason I'm saying I'm not like 
like over the moon for this one is because the shade match like i'm wearing this today i'm wearing the shade 2.5 n this is more of my self tanning shade i should have gotten like 2 n maybe even 1.5 because you could see visibly <laughs> like i even tried blending down my neck and it's still it's still not the same it's fine we're gonna get through it but this is the foundation out of all the ones that i've tried right lately this has been my favorite. I really like the matte version as well, but I do prefer a more like radiant, more like natural looking complexion. But if I want to show stuff, if I want to look like a doll, if I just want something that is a little bit different than what I typically go for, if you'd like a matte foundation, the formula of it is incredible. It's super lightweight. It kind of gives me like Makeup Forever Matte Velvet Skin Vibes, except it's more, like, natural looking. I don't know. If you could have, like, a natural matte finish, I feel like that's what the Dior gives. Whereas this, it does give a more, like, realistic look to the skin, I think. So I love Dior foundations. This is not my favorite of all the Dior ones I've tried. Air Flash still reigns, number fucking one. But this one, it's still good. I wish the shade matched me a little bit better, but hopefully, you know, the sun will keep coming out. And I'll get a tan once again. I just feel like I'm super fair. And I am having the hardest time picking foundations that fucking match me right now. It's The struggle is fucking real. <laughs> I can't use anything other than Wet and Wild Foundation? Really, Deandra? I hated the Wet and Wild Foundation. That was one of my, like, least favorite of all time. I'm 2N in that foundation. Okay, so is 2N, is that like a traditional neutral? Because I feel like this is 2.5N. I feel like this looks more pink than neutral. You guys let me know. When I look at my complexion, though, I feel like I look more pink than neutral. But I could be full of shit. Again, you guys let me know. Another favorite. I had no idea that Sephora had these. And I was just like... How did I not know this? But Sephora Collection has the facial razor set. This bitch right here, I'm like a wildebeest. I am so hairy. It's problematic. And I have hair that is like dark and thick. Thank you so much, Dad. So with these, you guys always hear me talking about how I have like a mustache. Sometimes you guys see the mustache. Whatever. It is what it is. But when it's when it's visible, it's visible. Even like the peach fuzz on my face, I feel like it's really detectable, especially when I put foundation on. So anytime that I'm coming down to film or anything like that, and I look in the mirror and I'm like, oh shit, I just use one of these straight razors to just like clean up my facial hair. Or sometimes if I'm getting really brave, like I was today, I'll like clean up the edges of my eyebrows. I don't know how they're looking today. How do you guys think? I did trim off a little bit of the end of my brow today because <laughs> the end was looking a little thick. So I just basically like groom myself with these and they're like, they're not overly sharp. Like I feel like they're really easy to use. Like I don't feel like I'm going to cut myself. It's just like a straight razor. I got them for like 15 bucks. Again, the Sephora sales coming up. These should be, I think 30% off during the Sephora VIB sale. So I just, I got them because I needed, like, it was like, I think they had, if you bought four, you got, like, 20% off or something like that. And I already needed other Sephora products, so I'm like, I need one more thing, let me just try those, because I know that I like those. But I was just like, yeah, I like the colors, I like that you get four. I also really like the fact that you get this, like, Ziploc bag, and they all have guards on them. I'm sure you can get them on Amazon for probably cheaper, but in the case you're in a pinch and you're near a Sephora store... Just pop in store and get them, you know? I like them. That's it. That's the tea. Next one. Let's talk about a fail really quick. We'll do a fail and then follow it up with a favorite because I tried two sponges recently. So the first one, this is going to be the fail. <laughs> I don't know what the hell is on the bottom of that, but it's okay because I'm just going to end up tossing it anyways. But this, I don't even know what brand it's from. Like, i seen so many people using this between TikTok and even on YouTube. And I'm like, what? is that sponge and there was a actually a subscriber of mine she dm me like where she found hers and i went to walmart and i found it and i'm like all right i need to try this shit because i love how it's so pointed on the inner like you can get right up in your inner corner i really like this for like concealer application as far as the actual structure of it 
but this is one of the most dense sponges. And that's just one thing that's like a deal breaker for me. If I feel like I'm like hitting myself in the face, like I literally feel like I'm putting makeup on with a fucking russet potato when I use this damn thing. So if anybody knows the brand name for this, again, it's at Walmart. It was on like an end cap. It came in just like pretty basic plastic packaging, basically like how sponges typically come. So this one for me, unfortunately, was a fail, but the Thirsty Lemon, when did you ever think, like, a lemon would be an ideal, like, makeup sponge? <laughs> but I love this. I remember I saw Tati talking about it. This kind of blew up on TikTok, and it just kind of got put on the back burner for a while, and then it kind of just came up on my For You page again, and I was like, you know what? I want to try that. So this one, I think, is like 12 bucks. It was out of stock for a while, but it comes like in a, almost like, I feel like the Tati Blendiful came in like a similar packaging. I wish I still had it, but I have no idea. But it's in like an envelope sort of a packaging. So you open it up. It looks just like a lemon. It's super cute. It gets right up in there. I will link everything down below after for you guys as well. I didn't want you guys cheating and seeing all my favorites and fails. So this one, my favorite thing about it though, like I was saying with this sponge, it's very dense. Even when you wet it, it's still dense. The Thirsty Lemon is one of the softest, like so fucking like soft and plush. This could almost serve as like a stress ball. I love the texture of this. And that's what my favorite thing about it is because it doesn't feel like I'm like hitting myself in my face. It, it's like a texture that I like even more than the original Beauty Blender. It just, it feels so soft. There's another sponge that it reminds me of as far as texture. I couldn't think of which one it was, but this feels even softer. So if you love a super like soft and squishy sort of a situation, I, I recommend. I don't know where I was going with that, but it's fine. <laughs> How many times today can we say it's fine? All right, next one. So we got one fail out of the way. Let's do another fail. So I've tried a few concealers this month as well. And honestly, after wearing them and testing them over time, like at first, like the first one, I really liked it. Everybody was saying how smooth it looked in my video. So the LYS, the Triple Fix Full Coverage Brightening Concealer. This looks amazing on camera. This looks amazing when you first apply it. It's very thin, almost reminds me of like the Hourglass Vanish Concealer, except over time, I did a wear test. I think it was the Kosas foundation that I did a wear test on on my TikTok. This, oh my gosh, it looked horrible. I was just, I even made the comment like in my check-in on TikTok. I was like, and this concealer is not looking cute. This is the one that I was wearing. Again, when I first applied it, it looked beautiful. I've tried setting it, not setting it, and it always just it really emphasizes the texture on my under eyes and I'm just having a really difficult time. This is the one I'm wearing today. I'm having a really difficult time with concealers. Like everything compares to my Dior Forever, what is it? The Dior Forever Skin Correct, I think it's called. That is my current like holy grail concealer. I've been reaching a lot lately for the Anastasia Beverly Hills one, but the Dior is still my favorite. But this one like I think that there's like issues as well with the packaging that I don't necessarily love. Like something super petty, but it's just one thing that annoys me. Like I love the fact that they do these triangular, like everything is very on brand with like the triangles and stuff. The packaging though, it doesn't, um, it doesn't fit like perfectly. So it kind of overlaps very oddly. It's just, again, it's so petty and ridiculous, but it's just one of the things to note. But then even when you take out the, con the like applicator, it gets stuck like right here. Let me know if any of your guys does this as well. So I feel like I really have to tug on it. And then usually when I tug on it, the product like flies everywhere just because it's so liquidy. So that's one thing I wish that they would fix the overall packaging. Cause even like when I have to dip in to get more product, it's even a pain in the ass because it's like this part of it is very flimsy. So when I stick this in here, it's almost like I have to push it in a little bit more. Again, it's so petty and like ridiculous to even analyze it that much. But all those things kind of chimed into one. It's like overall, I would not repurchase it again just because I've experienced more like annoying things about it than positive things. 
You know what I'm saying? So this one, let me know what you guys think. Let me know any of these products. If you've tried them, what your guys' thoughts on them, because my opinion is not the end all be all. Okay. But second to that, an even worse concealer, if you could even call this a concealer, what the active wear super stay concealer from Maybelline. This is one of the most sheer concealers I've ever seen in my life. And it's a bummer because I really like the shade of this. I really like the packaging. I really like the applicator. Like everything that I just bitched about with the LYS one, I like with this one so much better, but this has no coverage. And I don't even feel like I need that much coverage when it comes to concealer. Even I look at my, like my makeup and I'm like, yeah, we need to add a little bit more. Luckily, this is a more buildable type of formula, so you can layer it on top of itself and it doesn't look heavy or cakey, but the amount of product that I have to add and I don't feel like I need a lot of concealer, I can only imagine people that actually need a concealer or you need coverage. People would look at this and fucking laugh <laughs> because they'd be like, um, excuse me, uh, Maybelline, I need concealer, not like... I don't even know. Like, it's so fucking, it's so sheer. It's ridiculous. Like, that even looks more pigmented on camera than it actually looks in real life. It's, like, pathetic how little coverage that has. Anyways, that's a fail. And then, let's do a favorite. Because this was, I, I can't remember when the hell I bought this. I do plan on doing a, like, Sephora haul follow-up video. Basically from, maybe, like, my most few recent Sephora hauls. I think my like previous two because I, I did pick up a lot of stuff recently. You'll probably see this in that video as well but I want to do that before like Sephora content comes out for the VIB sale. Just if you guys are curious about any of my like anything that I picked up what my thoughts are on it. So I picked up the Rare Beauty cream bronzer which I feel like everybody and their mother's raving about this and you know what this is for a damn good reason because this bronzer is fucking fire. It's super creamy the only downfall about it is, is it's very warm. It kind of gives me a similar vibe of the, um, the M Cosmetics, you know, the So Soft face plays that I always talk about that I love so much. So this is the shade Happy Soul. Yes. It's like the, uh, the second lightest, I guess you could say. So there's one shade that's lighter than this one. So I do have this on my face today. I like to layer this underneath my foundation so I you really can't see like a ton of it but I just focus it right towards the high points of my cheeks. If anything this is what I've been using instead of like my Hollywood contour wand but then when I need to snatch my double chin I pull in a second product. I don't put this on my jawline because of how warm it is. This is pretty much like cheek forehead only when I want to add a lot more warmth. If you're looking for something for contouring, I would not go for this just because of the tones. In my opinion, these are very warm, but I really like the packaging. Like everything about this, I fucking love. It's super user friendly. It doesn't break up my makeup or anything like that. This is a fantastic product. Like I might say one of the best products that I've tried from Rare Beauty. So definitely love that one and would definitely recommend if you're shopping the VIB sale. And then... M Cosmetics came out with their Masterpiece Collection. And I forgot to mention this earlier in the video. I usually don't feature eyeshadow palettes because I do plan on doing an eyeshadow palette ranking. Basically, I think I'm going to do that like every couple months because I don't get a lot of use out of a bunch of palettes in one month. So like now I think I have like 10 palettes over the course of two months. So it'll probably be like an every other month sort of a situation. But if you guys would like me to start adding eyeshadow palettes into these videos, just let me know and I can do that. But you'll see me feature the eyeshadow palettes from the Masterpiece Collection. Long story long. But within that collection, they basically did like a lighter version and a darker version between the eyeshadow palettes, the face products, and the lip products. Every single piece of that collection was hot fucking fire. I did a dedicated video to it. I did the lighter version on one side, the darker version on the other. I love every single product in that collection. The lip product I'm wearing right now is the M Cosmetics, the Lip Cushion Tinted Lip Luminizer in the shade Van Gogh. But like I said, if you want to see the, like, the dedicated video, highly recommend watch it. But their products are just spectacular. They truly look just like ethereal, angelic, 
almost like Hourglass with their ambient powders. It's just, their whole brand is like that. Everything just gives me like such an angelic vibe. And some of my favorite products are these like Heavens, what are they called? The Heavens Glow Blushes. Look how beautiful that is. That's one of the products I'm wearing on my cheeks. I'm also wearing this. I like to use the shade, I think it's pronounced Baroque. I like to use this as almost like how I use the, or the, the ambient lighting powders where it adds almost like a light hint of luminosity to your face. That's what I like to use this for. I feel like if you have fair skin, this will serve as a blush for you. Since I'm a little bit darker, it does serve as more of like a blusher highlight sort of a situation. But the shade Rock Coco, I think is how you pronounce it. This is the blush that I'm wearing today or one of the blushes that I'm wearing today. Fucking beautiful. My favorite of all of them though, I'm going to go with Faded Clementine or Venetian Rose. I love those two but I love these as well. I think this just was an, a knockout collection because the basic bitch in me loves boring ass color stories. <laughs> just my makeup aesthetic. I do think that it could potentially accentuate texture. Like today, I feel like some of my texture is a little bit emphasized, but it was because I was rushing to apply it. But I love to just use like light layers and build and build and build with those products. Again, they're fucking beautiful. I love them so much. But I did want to mention this because this is another favorite for me. So you guys just heard me talk about these M Cosmetics, the Lip Cushion Tinted Lip Luminizers. These are one of my favorite lip products. I love like a satin, juicy ass lip. And then I bought all of these Makeup by Mario, the Moisture Glow Plumping Lip Serums. If you like these, you will like the M Cosmetics. If anything, I think the M Cosmetics just has like a slightly different shade range and it's a little bit easier to apply with the M Cosmetics because the applicator is a lot smaller. The applicator is almost like um, ColourPop, the lippy sticks, very similar packaging to those ones. But this shade particularly, I should have wore this with like the look that I have going on today but the shade Apricot Glow, I don't know why I love this one as much as I do, but I did a lip swatch video. It's on my YouTube shorts. It's on my TikTok. I believe I actually posted it on my Instagram as well. I bought all of these bitches, but Apricot Glow, this was actually the first one that I picked up. I think it's because I don't have a lot of peachy lip products and that's why I love it so much, but look how fucking juicy. Oh, so juicy but these straight up melt. This is like a solid version of a lip gloss. These remind me a lot of the, remember when Marc Jacobs did the, um, ah, oh, what were they even called? They looked like the lip glosses, but it was just like a solid version. That's exactly like what these are. So they're a little bit more difficult to apply because it is like a fatter application. Let me give you guys swatches of these two because these deserve it. These are so stunning. I feel like M Cosmetics honestly does not get enough hype. I think the um I think the Moisture Glow lip plumping serums are definitely shinier, but these totally have that like juicy look to them. It almost looks like you're wearing a very light layer of lip gloss, whereas this looks like a straight up lip gloss. It's so, so pretty, but they're just, they're so different. Mm, I love these so much. But Van Gogh is definitely the favorite between the M Cosmetics. You see the difference though? Like, look at how, <laughs> that's got so much shine. These are more of like a satin. This is more of like a gloss, but fucking gorgeous. You guys remember those Marc Jacob lip glosses? Why is it that all the fucking good makeup is leaving? Oh my God. I still can't get over that makeup geek shit. And now Dee Dee Signature is closing. I cannot. I like, I can't with life right now. <laughs> so disappointed. Okay. So then we have, what do I want to do next? Let's do Davina. Is Deandra still here? Listen. Y'all knew this was fucking coming. I know I don't talk about eyeshadow palettes, but I am going to talk about an eyeshadow collection because this collection fucking slaps. And this, the collection is the, I think it's the Moonscapes, right? Oh my God. You guys always hear me talk about Moonlit. There's basically six other sisters for Moonlit and I'm going to swatch these for you. I swatch these on TikTok and I'm like, man, 
These need to go viral because they're so fucking beautiful. I did a dedicated like swatch party to these. Right, Deandre, I see you're here. These are the moonscapes, correct? Am I getting the name right? I'm just like, I don't even care what the name is. Just look at these. It is just like crushed diamond goodness. Oh my God. I need one of these in like every single color on the planet. Oh my gosh. So gorgeous. I'm swatching all of these so you guys could see these because these need so much hype. I feel like I hype them up all the time. I fucking love Davina Cosmetics. These do look very similar if you look at them like side by side, but when you swatch them, that's where you could really see the difference in the undertone. Oh my God. Guys, look at, just look at how gorgeous. Like I have, what's the shade? Earth Shine is what is on my inner corner. It's got the most beautiful green, like foresty green undertone. It's so unique. You got this pinky one right here. They're just, oh my God. I can't. I fucking can't. I need these in every color, I swear, because they're just glorious. This one's like green, but gray at the same time. It's so unique. Oh my God. Look at this shit. Do you understand? Like, <laughs> look at how gorgina. Deandra, I'm telling you, whole ass collection is what we need. Imagine this in like a hot pink, bitch. Oh my God. And then let me do Moonlit because I do think Moonlit, there's something different about it. Like these ones here, they do have a slightly like chunkier texture, but I don't even care because they're so beautiful. But Moonlit is just like, if you could think of like liquid diamonds, that's exactly what that looks like. This almost looks like, <laughs> this is so stupid. But when we did the epoxy on my bar top and on like the women's bathroom floor at my bar, there was a product that's called liquid diamonds. And that's exactly what it looks like. It's just, it's so good. I could not say enough amazing things about these. I do have a discount code with Davina. It's down in the description box. If you guys are ever interested in shopping Davina, this collection though, even like their mattes, their matte eyeshadows is what's on my eyes today. They're fucking highlighters. Davina is 20 out of 10 and look at this palette. I think these are currently sold out, but how cute. You go Glen Coco. I fucking love me some Davina. Love those so much. And you know what? I'm going to mention this as well because I don't think I've mentioned this in a video yet. This is what houses currently all of my Davina eyeshadows. So this is from Adept Cosmetics technically, but let me show you why I put my Davina eyeshadows in there. <laughs> Because it's like a dual-sided eyeshadow palette. And then it's got this little thing, divider in the middle. I'm still deciding how I feel about it, but I think a lot of people would, like, love this. I, I get nervous with these eyeshadows because they're very soft. So it kind of makes me nervous housing these. I might switch my Makeup Geek shadows to this now that, you know... Makeup Geek is no longer going to be creating eyeshadows, guys. I'm so, I'm like so fucked up over that. You have no idea. But I think that's what is going to come into this palette is my Makeup Geek just because I would like all of my like colors to be together. And it's still like a pretty big palette. And since I'm not going to keep it in like top drawer for filming and stuff anymore, like I'll show you really quickly how much room, <laughs> like... I think this is what it is. I would rather see my Davina shadows in this packaging because I like to look at all of like the beautiful like sparkly shades. But with these, it's like all these matte shadows take up so much room. So I think I'm going to do that. I'm probably going to switch these around. But this, I think it was like 40 bucks. I got it off of Amazon actually. So I'll link this down below for you guys. I can't remember if you can get it off of the Adept website. But they have new, I think, um, like magnetic palettes coming soon. I'm very curious to see what they come out with. Because I am so surprised that more brands don't like design more palettes. Because I love the clear top. We've talked about that. But oh, one more time. So fucking beautiful. Right, Deandra? She says, you're brave. I know. That's where I'm like, I need to take them out of there. Because I feel like I'm going to fuck them all up. <laughs> okay. 
couple more things and then I think we're done. I'm looking around. I'm like, I don't want to forget anything. So this next one, it's the Stay All Day Blue Light Micro Setting Mist from e.l.f. Cosmetics. This was a fail for me, unfortunately, because I don't like the way that it smells. And it's the, like, blue light. I'm always like, it's a crack of shit. I don't care what anybody says. <laughs> the blue light protection, whether it does it or not, I don't fucking know. But I don't think that this does literally anything for my makeup application. And a lot of the times I will apply this. Like, I use it when I film a lot because I'm not going to, like, go out or whatever. I just basically use it to set my face, but I don't think that it does anything as far as making my makeup look a little bit better. It doesn't make my skin look more glowy. It just really doesn't look like I did anything. So this one for me, unfortunately, surprise, surprise, was a fail. I still don't know how the fuck I ended up on their PR list, but that was gifted to me by the brand. I think Patty Alonzo is going to come for me so hard if she sees this. But I have been testing this and testing it and I'm like, I need to love this because Patty is the one that got me to buy this and I just don't like it. It's the Rare Beauty Eye Primer. This does nothing for me. It breaks apart on my eyes. I don't think it makes anything lay nicer. It doesn't cancel my darkness. Like when I watch Patty apply this, I can see like it like cancels out everything. When I apply this, it doesn't do that. Like, I don't know if maybe she just applies more than I do or maybe I got a dud. I don't know. But I have tried this and tried this and tried this and tried this and I just don't like it. <laughs> but the main reason why is because I don't think it makes my eyeshadows last and I do find that my eyeshadows crease when I use this. I think I do have other ones that it creases as well. But I've just noticed like every single time that I've used this, my eyeshadows always crease. And I do have oilier eyelids as well. So that could obviously be a contributing factor. But that was a fail for me. And then super disappointed about this one because I had such high expectations for this. It's the Major Volume Plumping Gloss from Patrick Ta. Patrick Ta is a brand I want to love everything because I love the whole aesthetic. I love his artistry. Like I fucking love everything about Patrick Ta. So the, uh, the like the component, I was so excited because that was my biggest complaint about his original glosses was the component was just not it. You had to go in like dip multiple times. You had to layer like a million times to get the most beautiful effect but then I saw that this was different packaging and I was so excited because I'm like, yes, this is what I would love to see happen with his original glosses because I don't have to dip in nearly as many times. It's got the giant applicator, love it, until I smell it and apply it on my lips. And I'm one of those people, like, I'm not opposed to, like, warming sensations or anything like that. Like, I could get down with that. It's the scent. The scent repels me so much. Like, it smells like artificial cinnamon. Think like big red gum, but more artificial smelling than that. Which is so disappointing because I'm like, oh my god, his original glosses, they smell amazing, they feel amazing, they look amazing. These, I'll put it on just so you guys can see what it looks like. I picked up the shade Superficial. I think this was classified as like the beige one. It's a beautiful gloss, but I'm telling you, I don't like the smell that much that I'm just like, nope, I cannot get past it. But I will also say it's a pretty gloss, but his originals are way prettier. Like they're more sparkly, but this gloss does have that warming sensation. So if you don't like that, you will not like these. Overall, not it for me. Smell compared to the Fenty Heat Gloss. Do the he does the Heat Gloss smell different than the original? Because I like how Fenty's gloss, like the original Gloss Bomb, I like. That smells like strawberries to me. This smells like cinnamon. And I usually like cinnamon. I don't know. It's I think it's because it just smells so artificial. If you have this, like this is the new, the new glosses that he did. If you have these and yours smells different, please let me know. Because in my mind, I'm just like, I would love it if I just got a dud. <laughs> but I really don't think that I did. But I could, I could already feel like that. It almost feels like a tingling sensation or a warming sensation. I could already feel it. So again, if you don't like products like that, easy pass for you. 
And then I think this is my last favorite. I'm looking around just in case. If not, you'll see it next month. But Tom Ford, baby. Ooh. Tom Ford lip color satin in the shade 53 Lowe's Dalmafi, I think. I don't know. I love Tom Ford satin lips. Such a good formula. This packaging is fucking everything. And this shade is so beautiful. Mm, so basic, but this is like my go-to type of lip shade. Let me give you a swatch like so you can see like as far as pigmentation goes. So you get one swipe pigment, but you will probably layer just to get like full, full coverage. But I think you get a really nice amount of coverage on that first swipe. Satin formula though, fantastic. I love me some Tom Ford, like I said. And I definitely love the packaging. So I think I covered everything for today's video. <laughs> Again, if I didn't or if I forgot something, because I'm sure that I did. I'm trying to go through my collection. Like I just did a lip collection like declutter video. If you guys missed that, I just decluttered like, I think it was like, at least half of my collection. I did very, very well. So I'm trying to be a little bit mindful at this present moment what I'm bringing into my collection. I just purchased the NARS palette today. It was available on Ulta. Bought it immediately, so that video will be coming. I also did buy the um, Chanel foundation again, so hopefully I will get it this time. That will be coming as well. Tomorrow night is Monday, so we're gonna come back for new makeup releases at 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I would love to hear your favorites, your fails, what you guys thought about all of these products, and let me know in the comments as well what videos you guys would like to see this go around for Sephora content. Typically, I do Sephora loves list, like declutter. I'll do like a recommendations video. I usually do a bunch because my audience loves Sephora content, but I do plan on doing like a Sephora haul follow-up sort of a thing. So if you guys have anything different that you want to see, let me know and make sure you guys follow me on TikTok as well. If you're wondering what's on my eyeballs today, I saw a couple people asking earlier. It will be posted probably tonight or tomorrow, but I think I'm going to post it as soon as I'm done here. So follow me on Instagram, follow me on TikTok. Everything is in the description box down below. And if you're shopping any of these products, I do have links or I will have links in the description box. And if you guys have anything else that you want me to review, let your girl know and I will see you guys in my next one. Okay, bye!